Welcome back. Well, our next guest has left her mark as a New York Times bestselling nature writer. Now she's taking a stab at writing novels. And tonight you can find her at the bookmark in Neptune Beach. Please welcome to the show author where, of Where the Crawdads Sing, Delia Owens. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you for having me. This is an exciting day for you. The, this is the actual launch date, official launch date of your book, correct? Yeah, this is publication day. Today. Publication day. And so Where the Crawdads Sing. Uh, what, what's it about? You know, if, I mean, obviously we don't have a, enough time to tell the entire thing. We don't want to give away the, the big parts, but. It's a mystery and a love story, a very intense love story. And uh, it, it's based not on my life, but because I lived in Africa for so long and was um, studied wildlife in remote areas, I learned about isolation. I wanted to write a mystery that didn't just ask who done it, but ask why the person behaved as they did. I wanted to write a mystery that would explore human nature. And so it's, it's, uh, it's a, 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 a mystery, but it tells a lot more about that. It tells about human nature as well. Now, uh, with the Crawdad Sings, or where the Crawdad Sings, you think, uh, where is this book placed? And it's actually in North Carolina, the marsh. And you actually use that as a character in the book. Right. The, the marsh flows through this mystery as the backdrop and also as a character, and also a lot of the clues to the mystery are painted into the, to the marsh. Well, this is fascinating, because like you mentioned it there, you lived in Africa for 23 years studying lions and elephants? That's right. In one of the most remote places on the planet? In two, di two different areas. In the Botswana desert, of, uh, the Kalahari Desert, we studied lions, my ex-husband and I, and then we studied elephants in the Luangwa Valley of Zambia, two of the most remote areas. In the Kalahari, we were the only two people in an area the size of Ireland. Wow. So we were very remote. Fascinating. How did that fuel you going into now writing novels? Because you well, did have writing experience. We wrote uh, three books that were nonfiction. This is my first novel. And I loved writing a novel. When you're writing nonfiction, you have to stick with the facts and the dates and <laughs> sure. and to a certain, you know, as much as you can. And with fiction, you can just go for it and just, you know, I, I ride horses a lot and I compare it to riding. Riding nonfiction is like riding around in, in, the, in the corral and riding fiction is like taking off on your horse up the mountain and going anywhere you want to go. This is, yeah. and the book, if you read the first paragraph and I'm not giving it because it is the first paragraph. There's a dude that's found dead in the first paragraph. So this grabs you right from the start. It's a, it's a mystery of who killed this person. And um, the main character is Kaya, a young girl who lives in the marsh. She's mostly abandoned by her family and, and survives on her own. And the people in the nearby village are suspicious of her. And you get to just love this little girl as you go because she's making it on her own. But then the people in the village begin to wonder if she's the one who who killed this man. So not the not the murder part, but Kaya Clark, the, the isolation part, is that where you pulled your feelings and what you went through and know about from living in total isolation? Yes, I wanted to write a book that explored how isolation can change a person. I lived in isolation, I realized how much it affected me, and I wanted to write a, a novel about that. You also, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I wanted to say that, you know, I live in the middle of nowhere, but I come back here and find that a lot of people feel isolated. People even living in a city, people who, uh, uh, who live in large towns, they feel alone. It's, you know, yeah. you don't have to go in the middle of nowhere to feel alone. Yeah, wow. great point. In the book, you also touch on race and environmental issues. Why was it important for you to actually bring that as one of the main topics? The book is based in the 1950s and 60s in the South, and I think it would be hard to write a, a book about a young um, woman who befriended certain people, and then some of those friends were from other races. And, 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 and I think that you can't write about that time and not bring the racial in shoes yeah. into it. And also the coastal marsh is so important environmentally. So I wanted, I didn't, I didn't say a lot about that. I just let the story uh, tell itself. I, di I didn't get into moralizing or anything. I just let those issues come out naturally. So it, you're a fascinating, fascinating person. Uh, <laughs> Thank this you. Is, and you. And people can come out and meet you tonight at the bookmark. This is That's the right. launch yeah. of your book tour yes. and you got a 10 right. city tour after this, yes. right? Yes, right. <laughs> this is the beginning today. Very cool. This is, uh, this is exciting and we won't say who, but the book has already has received critical acclaim yes, from, right. from some pretty big names that it's going to be announced soon. Very soon, yes.
And she's, she's just not, like I bubbling know. out of her. She's like, very soon, like, very soon. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you very much. That is very thank cool. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Remember, you can meet Delia tonight at 7 at the Bookmark in Neptune Beach. The address is 221st Street. And while there, pick up a copy of her new book, Where the Crawdads Sing. All right.